Welcome back to the ESR. What's up, Ron? All right, we are back live from New York City. We're talking evil geniuses right now. Revan, talk to me a little bit about this squad. What is the history of the team formerly known as Complexity? Well, since they picked up Clayster, they haven't missed the Grand Finals in any single tournament. They've placed second place twice, one at PAX Prime, and of course at the US Regional Champions. Here you see their current roster, Aix, Crim6, TP, and Karma. So this is a team that finished fourth at MLG Dallas at the start of Black Ops 2. After that, they go into the COD Championships from 2013, Black Ops 2. We saw how Optic Gaming was able to defeat them in Game 5. Too Quick was on the lineup back then, but after that tournament, they went and they picked up Clayster from Unite. And that team really was just a dominant force through the remainder of Black Ops 2. But it wasn't just Clayster. This entire team was really adding into the victories of this squad. What are some of the major victories that they've had? Uh, major victories, obviously the Call of Duty Championships there, but also you have Gfinity, you have UMG Atlanta, you have Gfinity 2, the MLG Fall Invitational where they came back down 05 against Optic Gaming. You have ESWC, which they'll be back at to defend their championship. You have the MLG Fall Championship, and of course UMG Philadelphia. So they haven't placed outside of the top two and basically forever. This is definitely the first dynasty that I've known of in Call of Duty. Is it fair to say this is the only dynasty in Call of Duty history? You know, some people will try to make an argument for Optic Gaming during Modern Warfare 3, but at that time, there's not many not many LAN tournaments, at least in North America, really only in Europe, and of course not every North American team could venture over to Europe. So I would say, yeah, this is the only dynasty in Call of Duty. Now, Evil Geniuses, uh, they are, of course, Call of Duty champions, winning the most recent Call of Duty championship for Ghost back in March. But they've added some serious firepower in their fourth member after replacing Clayster. There's really only one guy in the entire Call of Duty community to go after, and that was Karma, the Black Ops 2 champion, the only two-time world champ. Yeah, Karma just has amazing game sense, amazing slaying power as well, and also brings a phenomenal search and destroy game to the team. Uh, you know, as you were saying, if you're going to replace Clayster on that complexity squad, it's got to be with this guy. So here's a look at some of Karma's stats. Most importantly, look at what he did at COD Champs. When the pressure is on the most, Karma is a pure performer. You can see with this squad, he was able to help with a 1.2 overall KD. Absolutely insane slaying power right up there, if not better than Scumpy's at COD Champs. His blitz caps, 1.67, but that's because he plays a very specific role. He's the goalie on the team. You can see his dom caps over 3.85. You can see 3.86 there, and his slaying power about 20 kills a game. His SND, though, was the most impressive part of Karma's game. If you saw him with the sniper rifle at COD Champs, he wasn't missing, and he did the same thing at UGC Niagara. Yeah, it's also important to talk about in Search and Destroy when he is sniping. Those first bloods are so important. You know, just being able to get the man advantage within the first 15 seconds of the game is huge. So Karma, in my book, he was the number one player in all of Black Ops 2. As a caster, I always know if I if I needed a double kill, if I needed some entertainment in the stream, just go to Karma's screen. He was always winning those battles, not only with uh, his MSMC, but also back in the day, he was probably the best sniper, in my opinion. Was there a better sniper in Black Ops 2 than Karma? In, hmm. your, uh, in your opinion? Better than Karma? No. I think he was definitely number one. Number one. Well, there's been an argument about his sniper in Call of Duty Ghost. Where do you rank him in the sniper division? I think he's definitely top three. I think uh, he has two contenders, one in Study and another one in Clacer. Both are, are phenomenal snipers, but we'll get a chance to see all of them compete at the X Games in one-on-one -on -one snipers. That's right. We did the bracket earlier today. We will show you that on the bracket show this Thursday. That's going to air at our normal time. Uh, but... From snipers to teammates, let's go to Aix, the captain of this squad. He's been the backbone of this team with his longtime duo, TP. What can you tell me about Patrick Price? No, I feel like up until recently, people haven't given Aix enough credit. He's been very consistent in each and every Call of Duty. He's always been one of the top players in my eyes, but you know, he just performs in every single game mode. Plus, he brings leadership to the team, amazing communication, and he gets them hyped up. I'm sure we've all heard some of his motivational speeches. And Eggs, uh, he's definitely an entertainer, and I feel like he puts on a bit of a persona. He's a nice guy behind the scenes, 
But when he comes to tournaments, this guy loves to play that villain role. He likes to get people flustered, likes to ruffle some feathers on the other team, and he's definitely a trash talker. Oh, yeah, Aix is just that kind of guy. He's, a, he's very cocky. He knows what he brings to the table, and he also knows he's one of the best. And, you know, he's definitely proven it on multiple occasions. Now, looking back at his stats one more time, uh, what do you think is Aix's greatest strength? What is his, his strongest attribute when it comes to Call of Duty? Hmm, I would say definitely picking up the amount of kills he does around the map. I mean, just look at his average kills per respawn, you know, 24, 24, 23, 23, plus his KD ratio. So not only is he getting a lot of kills, he's not dying that often. You can see that U.S. Regionals had a 1.42 overall. Uh, search and Destroy KD, better KD than Karma at COD Champs, and that was being in the action almost nonstop. His SND, again, an area where this whole team shines, 1.21 at COD Champs. In the current COD League Season 2, all positive numbers showing that doesn't matter whether it's LAN or online, his game is the same. So Aix, an extremely solid leader. He likes to call a lot of the, the strats when it comes to the game modes, but he's been with one player for almost five years now. How long has it been that Aix and TP have been playing together? Well, since Modern Warfare 2, they're competing together throughout that game. I don't know how long ago that was, but it's got to be, you know, four or five years. All right, well, the duo is real. And, and talk to me about TP. I feel like this is the one name no one talks about on this Evil Geniuses roster. Well, TP is the number one objective player overall. You see him, you know, he doesn't bring to, to, the, to the table a huge KD ratio except for the Season 2 League, but what he does bring is a great understanding of the game as well as phenomenal objective play. Take a look at his Dom captures at the Call of Duty Championships, 4.86 Dom caps per game. In the Season 1 League for Blitz, he averaged 3.7 caps a game. And you can see there his KD at the COD Champs. For an objective player to have that high of a KD, you're having one heck of a tournament, 4.86 Dom caps there. And his SND, what I find most impressive is he doesn't have above a 1.0 on any of these tournament lists. However, he's the bomb carrier. He's the bomb carrier, exactly. Yeah. And he gets the bomb down more than almost any other player I can think of on any of our top eight squads. You said he's the number one objective player. Where's TP at his strongest? Uh, TP is at his strongest when his teammates around him are picking up the kills. When he doesn't have to worry about winning a gunfight, that's when TP can just go off and do his own thing. He could find some sneaky routes around the map to cap the blitz flags. He could put his life on the line and cap those dom flags. And of course, he gets those bombs down in search and destroy. Such a selfless, humble player. And he has been kind of the quiet backbone of this team with aches. TP, he's been a longtime player in the Call of Duty community, one of the many faces you'll see at the X Games, but I can't wait to interview this guy and see his thoughts. What can they do when it comes time to battle for that gold medal? But there's one last player to talk about on this team, and you rank him in your top two. Tell me about Krim6. Well, Krim6 coming over from Halo was a very prominent player back in Modern Warfare 2 as well, but just take a look at his slang stats, man. At the Call of Duty Championships, he had a 1.29 kill death ratio, and he averaged 26.9 kills a game at the U.S. Regionals, plus a 1.5 KD ratio in Search and Destroy. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's insane. 11-0 game against Optic Gaming. Game 5 was the most impressive on his road to an overall 1.5, but... You can just see Krim6 excels when it comes to killing it. And what makes this guy such a monster slayer? Well, he's a perfectionist. You know, if he goes 30 and 1, he's really upset about that one death. And he finds a way to make it so that one death he had will never happen again. He's constantly improving on his game and always looking to get better. They call him the Crimbot for a reason. He plays, it almost looks emotionless. We've only seen him smile a handful of times, but here he is in game number five against Optic Gaming. This is from the Call of Duty Championships for a spot in the Grand Finals. Unfortunately, I was controlling the camera and I missed a lot of his great snipes, but you can see it here from a number, a number of other perspectives. It looks like they're going for a more standard B push here with the bomb rotating in the hands of Clay. And you see the Twitter poll on your screen as well. Who's going to win this series? Complexity giving some pushback. Make sure you guys are bearing oh, it home. Oh. oh my goodness gracious me. Krim and TP shutting it down. Complexity wow. fans. Optic Gaming is being more loud on Twitter, but right now Complexity louder in this game. Three down. It's all up to Clay. Clay step. One. 
V4 bombed down in a horrible position as well. Complexity are all around it, so he has to encounter that as well. And Karma, he's going to let Clayster just, you know, run straight into him and pick up that kill. Clayster, much success with the LMG so far. Hopefully new map may have some new luck with that, but TP still hasn't gone down. 3-0 as well. Krim, 2-0. So Complexity, they are ready and waiting for this Optic Gaming Nate shot pulling out a sniper as well on this map. So we'll see, does he try and rotate and get some snipes from behind a little bit later? Smokey is down at B. That is a clear sign that the bomb wants to go that same direction. We see early shots going through. No one dying yet. Nate shot alive on that right side as well. Not moving at all. Just waiting for the push. Scumpy getting tagged up by some grenades. And will he be able to finish this? Yes, he does. There is first blood. 34 seconds left to plant. That was nicely done by Scump. He knows there's a second play there. He's going to see him as well. Call that out to his teammates. Obviously, that player actually using Ankok. Clays is just going to go for the wall bank. And this is that LMG strat, which can be so strong. But just as he has to reload, the complexity player peeks around the outside. It's TP. He's cleaned up. Oh my god, that complexity is just so efficient in the way that they can it by himself. I expected Karim to die there. There were two arrows coming oh his direction. God. He dealt with it. Here's the final kill. Karim is going to get three that round. And here you can see the last one one more time as he takes out Clayster. Just hit. Let's go. Until this round, Nate Shot's going to have his work cut out for him. We've seen one play across at least. And has a sniper rifle out. This is a bit of a quick scope on TP. That's a huge kill. TP first of the team. And can he find bomb, the second bomb player? Bomb is going down right now. The second, in fact, all of Complexity, so close to him. Just gonna hard scope that, that door. Desperate, in fact, TP, TP was the player with the bomb. Right. Complexity are yet to pick that up, so they can't plant that. And I think Nature knows about that, because he is just staring at that corpse. Not willing to move at all, but Complexity are now going to start the push up towards Nature. Clayston needs to help his teammate out here. He can't afford to let Nature die, and he oh, has to. No. So Nate shot down, it's up to Scump and Clay here, and it looks like Embo's now also pushing it. That bomb now finally going down, as Embo's will be a little bit late there with the Septex, gonna find action, and just like oh, that, Krim Cole six. is gonna pick off everyone. Crimbot, perfect at 9-0, oh, he is Krim gonna six. get the ace this round. Crim 10-0 in five rounds. Bomb down, Crim had the nasty two pieces as we were watching Clayster. Let's see what Crim is doing off the break. Optic actually pushing A. Crim's gonna be on the opposite side of the map. Scumpy in position first. Nate Shot gonna push this bomb in. Clayster trying to cover here with Embos. Nate Shot should have that plan done at any second. Clayster's gonna get the first kill. Nicely done from Optic Gaming. Bomb down as well. Forces Complexity's hand now, but there is one Complexity player going for the flank. Yeah, that's Crim. Crim just gonna be being very sneaky. Time ticking, 30 seconds. Complexity need to make the move. Clayster with that sight, he's got it lined up, knows there's a player there, the oh, no. stun is gonna wreck him though. Nate Shot trying to answer back, he's given up his position. Scumpy, can he get some eyes on it? It looks like Embos was taken down on the back as Krim is pushing forward. Krim oh, now six, with zero. the squad, and that is a 6-0 finish for Complexity. They have defeated Optic Gaming, guaranteeing themselves $200,000 and a spot in the Grand Finals. Krim Bot showing what he does best, and that is just take out everyone who challenges him. 11-0 on that game. They go on win Call of Duty Championships in 2014. And there was a lot of questions around that tournament. They finished second, losing to Strictly Business right after they added Karma to the team with Karma on that squad at COD Champs. How good did that team look to you? They were looking unbeatable, and they were unbeatable. And I actually have a fun fact for you, Bucket. You want to hear this fun, fun fact? Fun fact time, let's go. So in each of their wins, their victories, they've gone undefeated in one game mode. It's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Which is kind of ridiculous if you think about it. In all of your matches, you're either going to go undefeated in all Dom game modes, which is twice a match, all Blitz, which is once a match, or all SNDs, which is twice a match. So. Plus, you got to think about it. If you never lose a search and destroy, like, how can you lose a series? Because if you always win a game five, well, you win a series 100% of the time. Well, uh, Ron, my producer, says not only that revenue, here's another fun fact. You okay. ready? There's a pattern to it. Mm -hmm. It started with Blitz, perfect at Columbus, then it went SD, then it went Dom. Dom is the next one that they have to beat. Can they stay perfect to keep that pattern in order for domination?
You know, I don't think they're too worried about going undefeated in the game mode. I think they're just worried about winning the event. Well, they went undefeated against Envy at UGC Niagara in the Grand Finals. However, they struggled a little bit early on. Let's talk first their strengths, the greatest strengths of this team. Obviously, it's the slaying power that we just saw in all their stats. But other than just saying that they're great at killing the opponent, what are some of uh, the biggest points you like on this evil genius squad well first they all trust each other whenever one of them makes a call in game they all react immediately to that call and even if it doesn't work out they continue to put their trust into each and every one of their teammates in every given situation plus i think their leadership as well as their experience they're all on the same page in every game mode and i constantly bring up this one example but whenever you watch them play strike zone domination and they're being spawn trapped inside the b flag off their initial respawn they always know where to push you know they're all kind of meshing very well together. You know, they either all go towards A or they all go towards C. They never really split up. When you listen to them, uh, there's very few teams that I felt had incredible communication when I made this switch from the Halo community over into Call of Duty. But this team has perfect small talk. In fact, it might be better than any Halo team I saw back in the day. They don't complain when they get outgunned. They don't complain if they feel that they didn't get a kill that they deserve. This is a team that does nothing but make proper call outs and they have smart small talk always calling out not only the player that needs to be hunted but where he's going to be so now i think it's time that we should talk a, a little bit about their weaknesses which i think we all know is a uh, playing against like unorthodox styles of play you know we saw them at ug St. niagara against that xgn team right. a team that they never had a chance to practice against and xgn wound up coming out on top of that yeah, and before we get to that XGN video, also a few other great examples. Strictly Business using a steady aim against mm -hmm. them, caught them kind of off guard at US Regionals. Would you say that it's the aggression from the other squad? Is it an equipment type of thing? How do you get Evil Geniuses flustered? I think it's more of an equipment type of thing. If you're going to use something that they haven't really had a chance to practice for. So if you're still using the same strategies you're using in the league against them, that's a big no-no. You definitely want to come up with fresh new strategies that nobody has used before, or you want to use strategies from the beginning of the game just to try to catch them off guard. If you like complexity, play their game. They're going to dominate you. But the one weakness that I think Rev and I can both agree on is that they struggle at the start of tournaments. They don't take it as serious as maybe they need to. We saw it at PAX, the original PAX back in Black Ops 2. We saw it again at UGC Niagara, and here's a perfect example of it from their matchup against XGN. On the other side, though, uh, on Twitter, if everyone's actually been like saying, you know, they feel like Complexity will be able to just lock this one down uh, because they ended up winning that Blitz game. But I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. This, I'm so. Oh, <laughs> wow. Pat. Uh, aches, I keep going back, I see the Batty Cakes is something else right now. He's been playing, he's the one player at least from the Flexi side. But that came out strong at awesome. the beginning. Yeah, and so he gets a second one there. I, I haven't seen him really lose a 1v1 battle, at least when we're on his screen at all. He's yeah, and out shooting. that's three. <laughs> is he going to go for the ace? Is he going to go for the ace? It's going to be... Oh, no, 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 no. That's the angle we want, Alex. That's the angle we want. No, that's not the angle we want at all. <laughs> And, uh, oh, Karma, he's actually going to be there for the stop. And so you know what we had again there, by the way. Last one alive was King Stun in a, a 1v3. No, no, no please. Just, he wasn't ready. Yeah, fans would have been going crazy. <laughs> he rips off another one of those in one stealth. Everything's situational in Call of Duty, Call of Duty right? But, oh, you say. But Warhawk. Don't say. Yeah, I mean, I should say, excuse me, Sovereign more so, just because of the way the corridors are, especially when yeah. you put that bomb down. Pat but is eight. just ripping people apart as he gets another two We got to go here. to Coaster. Yes. <laughs> this is insane. But, of course, you know, you, you're doing very well here. But, oh, never mind. Okay, so they do manage to get it, but they got to be able to close that one down, communicate with one another. The ace here. Karma's going to be by himself trying to see if he can get the smoke going. Finds oh, the no hit markers on there. Trizzy, no, he's not going to get it. his teammate. James going to be there for the stop, and Complexity are going to go up 3-2. to two, That's about or as good. Or XGN will go up 3-2. About as two. good as an ace. I mean, he got what? I guess he got those first three kills. He got an assist there trying to wall bang Karma as the last player alive. And Trizzy does pick up Karma, and we are in a 2v2. Krim's yep. got two in front of him. Thanks for that fantastic vision. He picks up one. Do you think he's going to be able to clean up this last guy, Alex? No, he actually, he's just going to go and check that bomb site now. This is oh, pretty much no. going to be cookies for him to be able to pick this one off. Oh. And that's going to do it there. XGN oh. are going to go on four to two. Just great sense by James. I don't know what's going on. The first two rounds, so strong. This time around, not, not so much. I mean, they've lost four straight here. they got to get that round win. Yeah, that's, that's just odd to have four straight losses here in this final game five S and D. I think Aix has eyes, he did, or sorry, Krim had eyes on one oh, just no. for a second there. 
Oh, he's trying so hard to get. There he is able to finally get that kill. His Ace also picks up Ghoster. So it is going to be a 4-2 advantage here for Complexity. One guy trying to wall bang him here. Oh, he gets challenged, but the teamwork there for Complexity able to take him out. James last alive. Yeah, James now having to deal with a 1v3. Player's going to be swarming him. Let's see what he could do here. 40 seconds on the clock. Pressure's on. Shot's going to go down right. Research, yep. and he gets cleaned up. A complexity finally managed to put one on the board. This team's on the other side, and Trizzy manages to even this one up into a 2-2, but uh, Aix manages to take out again. Trizzy. Can he do it? Oh! He does manage to take out Karma. Now it's going to be up to Aix and James. Last time Aix was in this position, he did not win it. So let's see if James is going to be able to clutch this one again. This will be a huge round win here. And he's going to locate him. Shots going oh, through, and he gets him right through the wall. Big play there wow. for James as he takes out Aix. You want to see a bulldog? Because yeah. James is coming gonna at you. going to shoot some uh, Methods faces at them. Let's see here. Oh, he finds him. That's going to be one first blood there. TP is going to get taken out now. Pressure's going to be on. It's going to be two down here. Trizzy is going to take out Aix. Karma and Crimsix. Last two left alive here as Crimsix. Or Karma's going to be putting out some shots, getting hit markers. And now that's going to leave Karma alone in a 1v3. This is not a good position for Karma to be in. And that's it! Oh the end have God. done the impossible! They have defeated Complexity in the championship winner's bracket. Oh my goodness, Complexity is going to the losers. The shock in the bottom left-hand corner on Complexity's faces. Evil geniuses uh, picking up the squad after that tournament. But how did XGN do it? What unorthodox strategies did they catch uh, Complexity with? Like, what was the difference maker in that game? I feel like they were working their 2v1s really well, as well as working the flank. You know, they were able to find a couple of holes in Complexity's setup, and they were able to exploit that, especially with Karma being the last one alive there. But uh, while Karma and a few of his teammates were alive, there was a member of XGN in their base, so they were going to do some damage either way. But, you know, good job working the numbers advantage, and they were able to take that match. All right, so they are beatable. However, no one's done it when it comes down to the finals, at least not in the recent history. It's been all Cole walking away with the titles with the exception of the U.S. Championship, where Strictly Business was able to beat them. But coming into the X Games, we got to take a look at how this team stacks up against their competition. We're going to see Optic Nation in their group. We're going to see Team Caliber in their group. And we're going to see Strictly Business in their group. How does uh, Evil Geniuses stack up against our first team? We'll see them battle against Strictly Business. Strictly Business, I think they match up very well. It's kind of like Optic Gaming versus Curse Orange there. You know, Strictly Business, they're not performing well in the league, so I don't expect them to have much confidence going into this event. Whereas Evil Geniuses, this is the team to beat. You know, this is the team where people are constantly switching their rosters and getting new players to try to beat them. But, you know, just more slang overall from Evil Geniuses.